department. And my name is Amy Kudo, and I'm the other undergraduate advisor in the School of So thank you all for coming to our lightning session today. Um, we really appreciate you all being here. Um, and today we're just going to talk a little bit about um, the Ed Studies program. And we just want to start off by getting an understanding of what you all think um, Ed, the Ed Studies program does and what types of degrees we offer. What, what would you do with a degree from the School of Education? Nothing, nothing at all. It looks like you have something to do. Yes. Teach. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. And it's usually what people think, right? School of Educational Studies, you go there to teach. But our presentation is going to show that you can do way more with a degree in Ed Studies. Um, and we're going to talk about um, the themes that uh, our classes and our, uh, our students are, are uh, covering um, in this presentation. So with that said, um, to, again, today, we're actually going to be talking about um, two of our big themes, which are social justice and equity. Um, why these terms matter in different social and um, community contexts, and then we'll wrap it up by talking about how an ed studies degree um, can prepare you for careers that make um, impactful contributions to diverse communities. So jumping right into it, up here I put some um, information on the board for you all to participate in this lovely poll. Um, if you would like to, please do. Um, if you don't want to log in, feel free to just yell out the answers. Um, so we'll give you all maybe a minute or two to kind of think about your answers to the question, what is social justice and what is equity? So what are some um, words that come to mind when you hear these two um, terms? What are some ideas that you think about? Just to get us up. Yeah, you can shout it out. You can shout it out too. Oh, I was going to say Black Lives Matter. Black Lives Matter. Oh, I thought you, you stole it. What else? Your answers will show up, but you can shout it out. Activism. That's a great one. Injustices 
injustices that we see every day um, and those social injustices that need to be addressed because they are taking away from opportunities um, from people who still deserve it, but they might not have that access to it. So as an example, voting law, there are a lot of injustices when it comes to voting law sometimes. Can anyone think of anything that was recently in the news? By the way, your participation cards, if you use them during this session, it will count. So that gives you a little extra motivation. Yeah, no, no, no. Yeah, I use it as a note. Yeah, so if anyone doesn't remember, down in, in Georgia, um, they recently had an election to vote for their new governor, and there were a whole um, mess of issues that were happening, such as um, people standing in line and not being able to vote, or people's ballots not being received on time, so they weren't going to count them. Um, even in Florida, I believe, there was like this whole re-voting or recounting the votes thing because of um, ballots being purposely used. You know, so things like that. That's a social injustice. And so a big part of uh, social justice is making sure that things like that don't happen. Um, law enforcement, we've all seen stories in the past couple years that have to do with social justice issues and um, folks being treated equally, um, the environment, clean water. Um, has anybody heard about Flint, Michigan lately? They still don't have clean water. That is a social injustice. So what do people like us have to do? What do, what do we have to do with that? What do we do? How do we take action to address those situations? Uh, as you can see, education, we obviously know that's a big one with school segregation. Yes, segregation is illegal today, but sometimes in schools, it doesn't seem like there's any difference. Um, and then, of course, workplace labor, so workers' rights, things like that. So there's a whole bunch of social justice issues, um, and with knowing about those issues, we kind of ask, what are you going to do about them? And it's issues like this that our class is actually covered, even though we are a school of educational studies. All right, so moving on to our next term, equity versus equality. So as you can see, equality is the state of being the same, and then equity is the state of being treated fairly, and fairness having to do with freedom from bias, dishonesty, or injustices. And so one of the first steps to making change through social justice is to understand equity. Um, and so moving on, we're actually going to give you a real life example to maybe make this more of a clear understanding for you. So we have three plants up here. We have a cactus, an orchid, and a lemon tree. So in maybe pairs of two or three, we want you guys to discuss the following questions and then we'll come back and share out some of our answers. Um, so in groups of two or three, answer the questions, what does each plant need to grow and thrive? How are these needs different? And what happens if we treat each plant the same? So we'll give you about a minute or so to discuss those questions. If you're sitting at a table by yourself, find somebody to pair up with. Each plant needs water. What else? But you do know, you're just not sharing, you're being secretive. Yeah, no, I how, how are each of their needs different? That's because they don't practice this story about water. But then, um, what happens if you treat each plant the same? Good job. Can you use that? What about sunlight? Why don't you do that? Alright, so we're going to bring it back in. What were some of the answers you all came up with? Um, you know, I have a different uh, cactus that they allow sunlight, and for the Negroni is water, lemon trees are allow water, like a good climate. So what happens if you treat all of the plants exactly the same? Some of them might die because they need different stuff for different amounts. 
So what does this teach you about the difference between equality versus equity? Um, equality would be treating them all the same, but um, equity is different people need different things. Is that what you were going to say? Yeah. yeah. Giving them each what they need rather than treating them all the same. Do right? you think that applies to people too? Treating everybody the same is probably not beneficial to many people? We'll give you a case study. Um, so we also want to discuss this case study. Um, after I've done reading, kind of discussed in groups of two or three, um, what could the teacher have done differently and what could have the folks at the reserve done differently? So here's the scenario. A sixth grade teacher takes her class to a nature reserve for a science-based hike, believing the reserve has accommodations for her new student who uses crutches to use the cerebral palsy. When the class arrives, they learn that the reserve's accommodations are underwhelming. Um, and they don't work for the student who's on crutches. So what are some of the implications for this? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. <coughs> um, the student wouldn't be able to attend. The student wouldn't be able to attend. attend? Yeah, really participate, right? Mm -hmm. Fully. What could the teacher have done differently? She could have called the that verify that there's actually accommodations available, see like online resources. A lot of times places like that will say on their website if they have accommodation or not. And they'll also have like reviews and stuff. So if there's someone who has tried to go who happens to have a disability, they'll report if there's accommodations for them or not. So it's really <coughs> lack of insight. Yeah, exactly. Any other thoughts? Could the reserve have done anything differently? Should the reserve do anything? Some not. Some not. Make better accommodations. Make better accommodations, yeah. Okay, so. Like pathways, right? Or make it clear on the website that place that requires a level of ability. And so with this scenario, what does that also say about the teacher's mindset and the reserve, the folks who run the reserve's mindset? They probably didn't have a, a person who's disabled in mind when they're thinking about these things. And so that brings us into our next part of the conversation, introducing to a few more terms. So like I was saying, the teacher and the folks who run the reserve didn't really think about those who are not able-bodied like they are. So that brings a sort of privilege to those people. Privilege meaning a set of benefits given to people who fit into a specific social group. So when talking about equity, we want to think about everybody. We want to keep everyone in mind. And so a lot of those identities should be taken into consideration. When it comes to privilege, what are some identities that you think of? Shut up. Ability. Ability. Gender. Gender. Race. Race. Class. 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 Education. Education. Social status. Exactly. Age. Religion. Sexuality. 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 Even your geographic location. And so these are some of the privileges that we, 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 all of us have different types of privileges. And so when we're talking about equity, again, it's important to keep those in mind. And with those privileges and identities comes intersectionality, meaning that although we identify as maybe like a woman, for an example, I also identify as African American, heterosexual. So everyone has different identities that count towards their intersectionality, meaning the idea that multiple identities intersect to create a whole identity that is different from its individual components. And then the last um, definition that I want to talk about is oppression, because oppression is the root of the reason why social justice and equity, those terms came about. And so oppression meaning the unjust or cruel exercise of authority of power 
So as a human race, it's important for us to be able to come together and recognize the differences that we have among each other and to see how we can make sure that everyone is successful, just like the plants. They're all different, but they all have different needs in order for them to thrive and be successful. And that's a really big um, lesson that we teach in the Educational Studies Department is making sure that everyone that you work with has what they need to be successful. And so, um, to kind of wrap things up, um, talking about these terms on social justice, equity, and privilege are in no way, shape, or form meant to make you feel guilty, um, but they are to raise your level of self-awareness. Um, and then with this level of self-awareness, we want you to challenge, influence, and change systems of injustice. And then once you are well-versed on some of these terms, it'll just help you become a better community member as well as a future leader if that's what you plan to be. It's important to be aware of these types of things and to um, just know how to address things as someone who's going to be helping other folks in the future. And so, does anybody have any comments or questions about those, that first half? How do you think knowing about these, these issues might affect your career even if you choose not to become a teacher, or an educator in any way? In pretty much every career you're going to have, you're constantly interacting with people, and even if you're not working, you're constantly interacting <coughs> with people just in life. So it's important to have a grasp of social issues and what's going on in current events so that you can accurately react to certain things and interact with people. That's a great answer. Thank you and have the ability and feel empowered to make change, right? hopefully positive change. Anything else? How this might affect whatever career you take? Yeah. Well, with, like, you can use this knowledge to like further, um, I don't know, further like, use your own privilege to make change. So whether it be your career or your degree or so on and so forth, whatever you want to do. With your but picking your own privilege and saying to yourself, like, what can I do with it and how can I change the world? Love it. Exactly. Thank you. So, in Ed's studies, we're talking about these pretty heavy, kind of kick you in the face kind of ideas. And that probably isn't the best way to sell this program, but it's really at the core of what, what we are as a program. So, you know, like we've been talking about a degree in educational studies, we'll talk about the actual degree programs that we've got, but it's going to equip you, right, with the tools you need to respond to inequity and actually make some transformational change. And it's going to give you the tools you need to address these issues um, and address or sort of, you know, implement long-term change. And you can see that right in our mission, right? Some of the words that we have bolded here so we're looking to we're looking to you know produce critically engaged educators, and we use educators as you know a broad term that we'll talk about. We're here to promote social justice, equity, right? So it's embedded in our mission that this is that if you take courses with us, or minor with us, or or major um, in educational studies, that these are the issues you're going to be talking about. And here are our degree programs. So we have three bachelor's degree programs. One is the bachelor's degree um, in educational studies. And this is a program for those who don't want to become teachers. You can actually major with us and not want to become a teacher. It's totally fine. And we have two concentrations. The first is in educational leadership, policy, and social justice. So for this track is for those who are interested in going into policy, law, maybe work for nonprofits that will help um, influence issues in social justice or influence legislation. And then we also have uh, a track called uh, Curriculum Instruction and Equity. So this is for those who might want to go into educational programming. Maybe you want to work for a museum or work for, work for a parks and rec organization or work for some nonprofit educational uh, organization. Healthcare is another one. Yeah, healthcare. Anything where you might be putting on educational programming, uh, this would be a great track. And this one doesn't end in certification. 
So there's so many jobs where uh, understanding curriculum would be super important. And then of course there's the BA in educational studies with the, with the option of becoming uh, a teacher. So that's the elementary education option. That program is highly structured. It's a cohort model. You're actually doing student teaching and taking classes in schools around the area. And that one does end with teacher certification. And because Ed Studies, as you're very quickly hearing, is so focused on social justice, we actually require that our teacher candidates get a double endorsement. So you're endorsed to teach elementary education. And then you have the option of either being um, ESOL, which is English, English language learners. So you'd be able to uh, work with students whose first language is in English. But then there's also the special education endorsement as well. So it, it, it calls back to our mission, but it also makes you um, a well-qualified teacher and a more marketable teacher when it's time for you to seek employment. We also have a post-bac program. So say you're really committed to the majors that you're in, but I'm inspiring you to become a teacher. Uh, you can come back for a fifth year program, a post-bac program, and get your teacher certification. And of course, we have minors. So this is for those who are um, not going to major in ed studies, but are maybe in STEM or in business and want some education or some of the topics that we've been talking about added to, you know, to your education. So say you're, you're thinking about majoring in business, but you're considering maybe HR, things like that. Ed studies would be a great program to complement your business degree. Um, especially with human resources, if you're putting on programming for employees or just want the knowledge, the diversity minor would be a great addition there. Maybe you're going to be going into STEM and you're going to work for one of the major organizations, uh, companies in this area. Having, um, again, the diversity minor or the education and society minor would be a great way to get some of this vocabulary that we've been talking about into your program and really prepare you for super diverse workplaces in this region. And of course, we always push, well, we push our students um, who are interested in ed studies but really interested in another area to double major. So we have a smaller uh, major, which means that a lot of our students double major. And some classic um, double majors, ed, ed studies and community psychology, that's a great pair. It allows st students to become school psychologists or become counselors. So we encourage these double majors. Business is actually another double major too that, that we, I've seen in the past. And here are just some of the career opportunities. Real life alumni hold these careers, and then other opportunities, um, curriculum design, student counseling. Akia and I are both examples of folks um, who work in education that aren't professors. So having an ed studies degree would, would really launch you into a career in higher education as a staff member. Recreation student life, if you work in the ARC or, or uh, love the activities that happen for student affairs, getting a, your degree in ed studies is a great way to prepare you for that kind of career. You can teach abroad through us. Um, and of course, ed policy, making change in a legislator going into law school. I worked with a student um, at a previous institution who made double major in political science and education and went on to law school to do ed policy. So all the different careers that you can do with Ed Studies. Questions for us before we turn it over to our colleagues. You're all going to be Ed Studies majors? Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. We've got handouts for those of you who want to read something rather than ask an audible question. So we're going to leave them. We're going to leave a bunch here. Feel free to take them. And then our email is right on the sheet. If you have any questions, it'll get directed right to us. So Amy and Akia, upstairs, third floor, pop in if you've got questions. Okay? Thank you. Thank you.